I'm Amy from Bear Wellness, and I'm creating this video to help people understand a little bit more about their fascial system from a functional perspective. So what is it and um, what role does it play in your body? And if you're experiencing pain, how it may be part of that. Now, who am I and why am I creating this video? Why do I care about this? Um, I created Bear Wellness to give people more options for dealing with pain. I, I think in our healthcare system, we tend to turn a little too quickly to medications or more invasive options. And in many cases, those things are very much needed and extremely helpful. But I'm finding that people want options. And I was very fortunate many years ago as a new graduate, almost 26 years, 27 years now, uh, to work with a very forward thinking physician who would look for other options for his patients uh, that were less invasive and uh, he found myofascial release. One of our therapists trialed it with several patients and found that it was very effective and he asked other therapists to become trained in the technique and I was one of them and I was amazed at how well um, it worked with clients and have continued to get more training in this in this area. And so I am now considered an advanced practitioner in the John Barnes myofascial release technique. I also have a doctor degree in occupational therapy and um, that is something that I, I bring into my practices as well. Um, I have certifications in ergonomics and body alignment, yoga, uh, meditation and stress management. And so I come at pain and um, wellness from many different angles. So um, Myofascial release has been important for me personally as well as professionally. I really found that understanding the fascial system um, and how not to just get treated but also how to stretch and how to move differently has just become a part of my life and helped me deal with my own pain and remain pain free for uh, most of the time. Now things creep back up on, on me as they do with everyone but I understand how to stretch differently to get into the fascial system and um, be more effective. So why haven't you heard about fascia before if it's so important? That's, um, I get that question a lot. I've never heard of it, you know, why haven't I? So a lot of the research that's been done in the fascial system has been happening for decades now, but it ha is happening in other countries. Most of our understanding of the fascial system has been from human dissection, which in that case, the fascia is not living. So it, it's been thought of this packing material that doesn't, isn't very important and it was just sort of discarded in the dissection process to get to the good stuff, which um, all the other stuff is important, the circulatory system, the muscular system, all very important, but so is the fascial system. So lots and lots of research that's just starting to get into our culture. Um, it will take a while. It will take probably another decade is my prediction on when it's gonna start getting in the textbooks. And then it's gotta get into the educational system and then into the hands of practicing clinicians. Um, if, a, if a therapist or a physician wants to learn about myofascial release, they need to go to continuing education because they may get told in school, it's out there, but it's not part of the educational system yet. There are some great books out there. You can look at these or get the reference for these on my website, but this is a really wonderful book um, that has some science and some functional perspective in it. And then um, another one that if you love the science and the um, cellular biology, you can get deeper into this one. This one also has some wonderful photographs and links to videos where you can actually see how the fascial system functions. You can also Google or go to YouTube and look for strolling under the skin. There's a video there that shows um, how the fascia moves under the skin. And it's, we have the technology now to understand it better, to get in and see it in a live person. So I think we're really gonna accelerate the understanding of fascia here in this decade, which is awesome. Um, you may have heard of the fascia in um, the media. There is a little bit through the media that's coming in um, through healthcare type media, also beauty, and that the 
fascial system and restrictions have some to do with our dimples and places that we don't want them. Um, and there's also some coming in through the uh, athletes or athletics on how fascial restrictions can decrease range of motion, which is quite true. Uh, but different ways of um, the approach of dealing with those restrictions, there's a lot of varying um, theories as to how to deal with those types of things. So let's talk about what fascia is and um, get into the more functional piece for you. So the fascia is often described as a web in the body. It's a web that runs from head to toe, fingertip to fingertip. It's three-dimensionally connected throughout your entire body. It's very hydrated. Um, it's often described as a spider web, um, but a three-dimensional spider web <laughs> throughout your entire body. It surrounds everything down to the cellular level. When we think about myofascial release, we think about how the fascia surrounds muscles. So if we take the example of the forearm, for example, we have many different muscles that run through the forearm and control the movement of the fingers and thumb and give us all this amazing intricate movement that we have. So the fascia surrounds each muscle in order to help it, them glide next to each other and have this wonderful gliding motion that, that it can create. But it also will then surround groups of muscles so that we can use the muscles together more effectively. So that um, is one function that our fascia has. So it facilitates the gliding, but it also keeps everything in place. Um, we have other tissues that help support that as well, but that is another one of its role. Um, looking at the fascial system when when there has been, when they're doing human dissection specifically to look at the fascial system, they're also finding that there's more, some thicker lines. So it's all connected, it's all three-dimensionally connected, but there's thicker lines that support functional motion. So for example, there's a line that runs from the top of the head, down the back, um, down through the legs and under the feet. So when we do things like bend forward to pick things up, the fascia helps everything move more smoothly and more functionally together. So um, there's also lines on the sides of the body, on the front of the body. So if we lean back, it it's supports and doesn't let things overstretch. Um, we're finding out that it's not just muscles that move us and keep everything together. It's also fascia that's working with the muscular system to do that, which is pretty amazing. Also, um, we're finding that the fascia is huge in communication throughout the body. There's nerves that are actually embedded in the fascial system that help us know where we are in space. That's called your proprioceptive function. So if we go back to thinking about that spider web, that three-dimensional spider web that runs from head to toe, if and the nerves embedded in that. So we just immediately know from our nerves and our fascial system working together that if we step on a rock with our left front foot, the rest of our body immediately knows that and knows exactly how to correct for that so that we don't fall over or get pushed in one direction. We immediately correct and it's, um, it's theorized that the amount of information that we're continually taking in through our fascial system is as great or greater than the amount of information we take in through our visual system, which is huge, a huge amount of information. So another, and where we're gonna get into more of the pain, is the pr protective function of the fascia. So the fascia is also theorized to be an, a, a shock absorbing type system. So we have this web that also will absorb impacts for us. So if we have an impact where we fall on our butt or we're punched in the arm or we're knocked around in a motor vehicle accident, it, and it's, it's not severe, then it will act as a shock absorber and, and um, help protect us in that way. Now, if the impacts are more severe, then what the fascial system will actually do is squeeze out its fluid and tighten down to support areas of the body. For example, if um, you fall forward onto your arms, onto an outstretched arm, your arm bone is not just going to shoot out your back because the fascial system will clamp down and hold everything together. And 
that's a really important um, role in our bodies. Okay, so why doesn't our system always go back to normal? Well, multiple reasons, it's theorized, multiple reasons. Uh, we don't drink enough water, we're not nearly as hydrated as we should be. Uh, we don't eat nutritious enough foods, but probably one of the primary reasons is um, we don't move. We don't move well in our, our culture. Also in our healthcare system, we're often told to rest it, don't move it, it's fragile. Um, we put on splints and slings and we're told to lay down and um, protect that area. And in many cases that's absolutely true and needed and a must, but we often take it a little too far. And we don't always see that in nature. We see animals getting up and moving um, right away. Um, fascia can also become chronically misaligned. I'm going to start over. <laughs> In our culture too, we are very sedentary. We don't move nearly enough. And um, we have jobs where we're sitting all day and then maybe we wanna be healthy so we go to the gym and we do very repetitive motion um, for 30 to 45 minutes. Maybe the elliptical, a treadmill, a bicycle, but we're not taking our body through the amazing range of motion that we have available to us. Um, another problem is our bodies are, because of our being sedentary, variety of reasons, our bodies are often misaligned. Uh, maybe our feet, our ankles, our knees, our hips are out of alignment, and then we're asking our body to, to sit, and we're tucking our tailbone, and we're rounding our shoulders using our computers. Um, but then we're getting up, and we're doing repetitive motion exercise, or maybe you're not. Maybe you're just go home and you sit in a couch and then you're in this C shape with your tailbone and your, your neck and shoulders and you're looking at your phone. So our bodies are chronically misaligned. And when we're chronically misaligned, our fascia will tighten up to support our ability to move and function in misalignment. So that, that thickening of the fascia um, is what can eventually end up causing pain. So. So many of us have had a history of surgeries or injuries combined with a maybe lack of movement or misalignments in our body. And as a result, um, we have sensations of tension in our body and we're not sure why they're there because we're stretching and we're, we're trying to move our exercise. Um, that can result in having pain that sneaks up on you and your bodies um, and you're not sure where it came from or a pain that you can't always pinpoint exactly where it is but it hurts or it seems to kind of move around a little bit. Um, maybe you're trying to exercise but your joints hurt um, or certain parts of your joints hurt. It could be because there's, there's pulling in your body that doesn't need to be there. When the fascia is tight, it rules. It's the strongest tissue in the body. So um, if you've tried things like traditional therapy or massage or chiropractic um, and they don't work, or maybe they work just for a day or two, then um, you probably have a fascial involvement in what's going on for your body or in your body. Um, if you've tried surgical interventions, but they don't always work or um, they only help temporarily, then you've probably got some fascial involvement too, or you're going back into the same misalignment or body habits that you had prior to the injury. So if fascia is pulling in your body, imagine that spider web, that three-dimensional spider web again and that you have an injury to one area of it and it tightens up. 
you can imagine that then it, the whole rest of that spider web that this has crunched down, it's pulling tighter into the rest of that spider web. And that's how it happens in your body too. So if you have an injury to your shoulder and um, this tightens up, then you can feel maybe that that spider web is pulling now into different parts of your body and pretty soon your hip hurts or your other shoulder hurts or your neck hurts but the injury was here, so why does everything else hurt? Well, the fascial system gives us an understanding of why now, where we've often been told if it's not in a where the nerves are or it doesn't match a muscle group pattern, then it must not be real, it must be in your head. Well, definitely there's, there's rationale now for some strange patterns of pulling and feeling in our bodies. So some people, when they come to me, they, they might even say too, I just, I don't really have pain. I just feel this discomfort all over, or I just feel tension in my body, or my legs just feel really tight. And um, they don't even want to admit they have pain, but they, they have this, this other sort of feeling that they want to get rid of, or that's preventing them from feeling good. So that's something else that, that tight fascia can can make you feel so um, what can you do about it <laughs> so fascia responds to a low load long duration stretch and when I'm working with a client one-to-one -one and I'm working with them on their body then I'm trying to find that just right amount of tension through pulling or pushing into their their body and at the same time I'm trying to get them to feel what that sensation feels like so when I teach them different stretches or movement they can do, then they can feel how to create that right amount of tension in order to do the stretching on their own. Um, we also look a lot at um, body alignment and how can they pull their body back into alignment through different kinds of movement and stretching so that when we get their fascial system open up, it stays that way and it doesn't go back because they're not going back into the world out of alignment. So very important. So one-to-one um, -one therapy, finding a practitioner who does myofascial release, but also, or you know, finding workshops. I also do workshops on how to stretch and address the fascial system um, using different props like therapy balls or um, straps or rollers or yoga blocks to, to make sure you're getting that just right amount of stretch so that your fascia yields. And when that yields, the muscles and the other tissues will come along with it. So the bottom line, really, your, your fascial system supports you in amazing ways. It protects you in amazing ways. Um, and it takes, gives us a lot of information and understanding and how we move throughout the world. But we have, it takes a lot of care of us, so we really need to take care of it through um, good nutrition, um, water drinking, and good, deep, slow stretching, and more than anything else, move, move more, uh, move better, move more throughout the day. Okay, uh, more information, you can always go to my website at marywellness.com if you have questions, uh, marywellness at gmail.com. Thank you.